to the fifth panel discussion yes. for the day yeah. on digital marketing and communication in the age of social media influencer. I'd like all of you to join me in welcoming our session chair for the session, Ms. Mamta Jhingra, founder Lateral Sutra. May I welcome uh, Ms. Jhingra on screen? Thank you. Thanks, Kathy. A very warm welcome to you. I'd like you to introduce you uh, to our panelists and take the session forward. Yeah. Uh, thank you, everyone. I am Mamta Dingra. I um, head a specialist communication advisory, Latra Sutra. We've been in business for uh, close to four years now and have uh, gone strength to strength. Uh, today, I'm honored to be here uh, sharing uh, the space with our esteemed panelists. Uh, so can I start introducing everybody, Kathy? Yes, please. Yeah, I welcome uh, and I really feel honored to be sharing this space with the esteemed guests. Uh, I'm the 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 first I'd like to uh, welcome Mr. Pranav Kumar. He's um, MD Allison partner, a global PR agency and has to his credit a huge body of work in the consumer and uh, strategic communication. Welcome, Prana. Thank you, Mamta. Very nice to be here. Thank you, uh, Kayathi and the Exchange Media team for hosting this event, as always. Uh, very nice to be here with all of you today. Yeah. Second on the panel uh, joins uh, Ms. Rashna Chaudhary. She's the founder and CEO of Media Value Works, which is yes. a digital marketing and a PR agency. And she's an industry vet veteran. She possesses over 20 years of experience and has delivered many innovative solutions uh, for large enterprises, SMEs, and startups. Welcome, uh, Rashna. It's a pleasure to have you. Thank you, Vamta. Lovely pleasure here. Thank you, Kathy. Yeah. And uh, pleasure being in this uh, panel. Thanks for hosting me. Sure. Uh, lastly, uh, Shruti Khanna, uh, who comes with a, to us with the experience of 13 plus years uh, in CRM, retail communication, consumer marketing, and data research and analytics. She's the deputy manager, uh, manager of digital and retail with Ford. Just joining in. Welcome, Shruti. You can come back. Uh, in the meantime, I'll just get started um, without uh, taking too much of time. Uh, so jumping straight off to the topic, you know, uh, when my four-year-old on a nice Sunday afternoon came and pestered me and said that, Mama, I want to watch Ryan uh, as, as, as an entertainment video, I was completely uh, flummoxed and I was looking for the answers that who is this Ryan? And when I looked up um, for Ryan on Google and, and I found that he's this nine year old uh, kid influencer who's earning 29.5 million and is one of the highest paid YouTuber who's known for his toy reviews and uh, uh, you know fun videos. Now there came, the, there came a turning point for me that okay, the influencer and influencer marketing and how relevant uh, it is that it is impacting and pervading all of our lives. So uh, in, in 2020, more than 46% of brand mentions which are featured ads were published by Insta with the uh, uh, mere 1k to 20k followers i would just want to you know head start into the session and ask uh, each of you so what is um, influencer marketing and how is it really turning our world around um i can take a quick uh, stab at it uh, i mean i think uh, um we're living in an age of influence uh, and i think that is only uh, amplified by you know the um, Spawning off a new generation of influencers. Uh, I think from a communication stands, uh, standpoint, when we talk about engagement, uh, you know, we've always had, you know, uh, journalists and you know, other stakeholders, but influencers, you know, certainly are a, uh, a category in themselves. And now we're seeing varying degrees of uh, specialization, you know, within influencers, micro-influencers, uh, influencers across, as you rightly mentioned, you know, uh, kid influencers. Um, so really, uh, uh, influencers play a very crucial role today in the entire uh, consumer uh, cycle of you know making purchases uh, decisions. Uh, but having said that, you know, influencers aren't sort of the all of end all because uh, you know there are other um, uh, tactical uh, campaign elements that you have to introduce uh, to be able to engage with uh, customers. Uh, but uh, influencers are definitely, you know, uh, gaining more and more uh, prominence. 
as are you know the platforms that they that they are really thriving on. Um, so I think from a communication standpoint, uh, you know, we really have to be creative in how we view uh, how best can we leverage you know, influencer, influencer engagement, influencer marketing. Great. So just taking off from that point, are we saying that influencers uh, is sort of a coming of age and it is a new way of uh, celebrity endorsement? Are they the ones who are actually eating into that space then? Rashna, uh, would you like to go for it? Yeah, any sure. of you? Uh, no, uh, OK, Pranav, are you taking that? So I'll, uh, I'll, Pranav, I'll let you chime in. OK. I'll let you chime in, Rashna. <laughs> sure, sure. So I'll, I'll share uh, some of my thoughts and how we've been seeing this industry changing versions and versions and versions. And I think we, as communication professionals, PR industry, digital marketing, we give it a name. But we've been transforming, I think, every six months to a year. There's a new definition of workflow that's been happening. And that's exactly what uh, Mr. Kunal Kishore just concluded. And I logged in and realized that finally it is how we are staying relevant every year, every two years. And the strategies need to accordingly align into the brand that we are handling. So uh, coming to the current stage on influencers, yes, it's as customized as the brand. It's as customized as the strategy. Are you looking to win net new customers? Are you willing to? Uh, are you looking at luring your old customers? So it's the journey. The, it's a cycle, and accordingly, you need to micro strategize who your influencers are going to be. You know, you may want to have one set of influencers for you to launch your brand, but he is not the guy who probably is having the persona or the appeal to sustain you on your journey. So it's as customized and extremely difficult unless we strategize it and we keep filtering. And that's what my thoughts were that you know, we need to do an auto filter mechanism today much more than what we ever did in the past because there were defined boxes earlier. Right now, there is no place where you know where to draw the line. Everything is blurring. So who the influencers are, how are we going to embed that influencer come in our marketing strategy? is all open and to be decided by the PR and the marketing professional as per his or her understanding. Right. So what would be the ideal uh, fitment? You know, so as I, 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 I like to go back again on the previous example, so when uh, brands used to strategize or marketing professionals used to sit and, uh, you know, put their plans through and uh, look at the fitment with the celebrity, there used to be certain traits uh, that the brand had, which uh, sort of resonated with the celebrity. Now, in influencer is a face which is not one. It could be more than one. It can be multiple. So how do you really uh, do the, 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 the matching of the points that, OK, this influencer, uh, you know, I can pick in on this criteria. So what is the what is the way to really find the fitment for the brand? What are the matrices there? Uh, so I could just, uh, OK, sorry. Yeah, sure. No, no, no Pranav, go ahead. Please, please go think, ahead, Pranav. Yeah, sure. Thank you. Uh, you know, I think uh, um, um, from a marketing perspective, we really have to understand on, you know, what is the path to influence, right? Uh, and essentially, uh, when we look at an influencer strategy, you know, what kinds of, what kinds of influencers, uh, you know, serve the purpose of a particular demographic that we want to go after? Uh, but uh, you know, these days, you know, it's very easy to go by numbers because it, it's all about reach and how many likes and all of those things. But I think fundamentally at the core of it, you have to have have some level of a, um, a methodology on how you select those influencers. So, for example, at our firm, at Allison and Partners, when we look at, uh, you know, carving out influencer strategies for our clients, we, you know, we have a, a very defined uh, uh, method in which we do that. You know, we look at basically influences as a sum total of, you know, reach, influence, you know, credibility and and some amount of, uh, you know, X factor about that influencer. Uh, so when we look at, uh, you know, uh, a, a particular inf uh, influencer, he or she has to bring that all together, the uh, authenticity, uh, the credibility, you know, the relevance, you know, and then that's how you go and, you know, pick out, uh, you know, specific sets of uh, influences that you really want to go after. Um, so it, it's, it's, it's really, you know, uh, uh, depends upon what the specific campaign goals are, but, but, but there's no one size, you know, fits all. Great. 
Uh, well said, Pranav. Uh, welcome back, Shruti. My question is going to straight uh, hit you now, since you are the data and the number person, and 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 you know you're always uh, crunching numbers. So, so what about the ROI in this whole um, era of AI and algorithms, where everything you know uh, the followers can be bought, they can be influenced, the likes, the shares. So, so how uh, does the real assessment as far as impact engagement? and call to action for the brands is concerned. How do you translate that all into ROI? So, um, uh, you know, Mamta, let me put it this way, that uh, if you want to go for influencers, uh, you can't really put that into numbers play directly. Mm -hmm. It is an indirect play. Uh, if the influencer is putting your story to the audience correctly, if your influencer is being able to build the gap, bridge that gap between you and the audience, the consumer, then eventually down the line for, for as long as you want to do the influencer campaign and uh, you will see the results. So at Ford, how we do it is we don't um, we don't believe in um, and I'll, sp I'll speak for myself as in we don't believe in going for uh, the big influencers, rather the smaller ones who can build the story for us. Because mm -hmm. we, you want to have a longer association which can build your brand, which can build the resonance for your brand with the consumer. And, um, you know, it's a very interesting one that we did. In fact, uh, in 2017, we did an EcoSport after the EcoSport launch. We did a 100 days of EcoSport campaign where we had more than about 50 influencers who uh, took to the roads, drove the echo sports, and did an entire storytelling for us. And uh, the stories that came out of them, so each of them gave, I think, about two, two stories. And the stories that came out of them have been building our, have been the building blocks for us even today. You know, the beauty of the vehicles, the beauty of how they've done the entire blogs and how they've built it up, we still use that content. So it's about oh. stories, how you tell, it's about brand building, and it's about how the how long can it continue and build that resonance for the brand. Eventually, we will end up in numbers, like we spoke earlier. You know, ROI is, uh, you can't live without it. You can't run a business without calculating that, right? So uh, bottom, bottom line, you will eventually get onto the ROI. But uh, to start with, yes, you see, you start seeing, that you want to calculate an ROI only when you will start seeing the impact of your influencer storytelling. So yeah. that's, that's a very point. interesting point you have, you have brought in, Shruti, and I'm going to take on from there, although I never thought uh, and prepared for that. So the shelf life of a campaign, so how an influencer puts out a content can, uh, you know, the campaign may or may not still be around, but because the impact uh, of that content has been so far reaching that you know, it can cut through the shelf life of the campaign. So there, I would like to bring in another point, uh, which is of the, how in influencer marketing, when the influencer's role or, or you know, his own persona or uh, uh, his personality evolves into something else. So today, uh, like we've been speaking about it, today um, I could be a 25-year-old, uh, uh, you know, young and happening uh, 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 person and I am just looking at brands uh, and creating influencing content for brands which are lifestyle or which are fashion and retail and tomorrow I get married and I could be you know an early uh, in a family way and I could be a, a, a mom to be or a parent to be and I could start uh, influencing my uh, uh, you know followers into that and then you know I could the journey could be that I then um, get into fitness or, or, or you know other aspects of health and wellness. So, yeah. so how does it all connect with the brand really? I mean, the evolution of the influencer with the campaign, or does it, or does it keep changing really? Any of you, please. So, um, so I think it has to be the influencer that you select who sticks with the brand values and the message that you're wanting to deliver. Uh, if you select someone who is a, a small influencer, a small influencer will stick with you. You will have an opportunity to deliver a message for a longer period of time and sustenance with it. And which could mean inclusion of your brand if it fits in with the different phases of that particular influencer, right? Um, it's a personal take. 
or uh, and it has to fit with your marketing strategies very clearly because as an auto brand or or let's say as a you know if you're a, if you're an fnb brand if you're an fnb brand you would not go with someone who is purely into fitness fitness because that will go completely against your uh, brand perspective that you want to outlay right you want people to buy not to get uh, completely into fitness zones and not uh, you know buy the product so similarly it has to fit in uh, and mm. if that fits in with someone who's moving up a curve i think it, it is beneficial because you see the journey and the growth within so it's important yeah great and that's a good point uh Shruti, if i can just uh, uh say something very quickly also uh influencers are also evolving themselves right uh you know they, they are adapting to uh newer content formats uh you know they they, they have you know multiple interest areas um you know i think especially during the lockdown for example i think brands were using you know, influencers more because they also got increasingly uh, creative uh, of you know, what they can do to adapt that it's you know it's in english or you know uh, it's in, uh, in in multiple languages uh you know they they just need uh you know a, a, they are coming up with some creative ideas which really allow brands to uh, you know uh, uh, story tell in a very different way right um uh, so um certainly uh, influencers are also like you know phone band, uh, brands for example uh, today are not just engaging with you know consumer tech influencers but you know lifestyle fashion and so many other categories there's just so many ways that influencer allow you know the brand story to be told in a very creative way so i think that's very interesting from a you know, from a brand perspective excellent i think that's a, that's that's well said uh, my next point would be about the brand so uh, does influencer marketing really work for a particular brand or target of audience does it always work only for the millennials does it always work for the brands which are into lifestyle health fitness or or how does this entire uh, you know mechanism really work or or is it uh, uh, is it only the global brands or is it only the local brands so how does it really uh, come everything falls in place i think i want to hear rachna ji on that <laughs> on popular Because demand yeah because you know she's it it she she's been doing this for a very very long time and i'd like to really hear in terms of brands that she's handled and led what's that experience been so far and sure. how do they take it uh thanks i'll just try to uh, reflect back on uh, the experiences uh largely we must uh, you know we have this b2b and a b2c as one blanket sanction to understand that influencer marketing or any strategy for a b2b works very different b2c would work very different for b2b uh, the kind of uh, brands we've been handling and you know a lot of erp business and a lot of uh, crm business or bfsi focused or auto focused manufacturing focused the influencer remains an influencer but he's actually the most important influencer in the buying decision of the sales cycle and he is actually in this business of b2b uh, marketing that we handle he is the cio and the cto of the organization he clearly gets categorized as the key influencer but that time the guy is influencer is the decision maker of the process of that entire uh, business uh, that's the other side of the story but we have to still work towards how do we influence him mm. and he is the cto or the cio you know whereas in a b2c we have seen influencing is towards consumer so how do you influence a consumer now in this day and age we have the experience the customer experience the cx and the experience of ux which is the user experience the user interface in the digital arena the interface today is the window the app the screen that the consumer is watching and he discovers his entire brand the discovery cycle of he trying to make a decision is quite a lot now influenced by the user experience of the app or the interface he has and at that point in time the influencer whom we used in the marketing strategy may or may not have any relevance while he is doing the uh, well while he is trying to log in and view and make a decision about which uh, kind of retail uh, which kind of t-shirt or what kind of stuff is he going in for you know so as marketers we need to be very clear about where we want to spend our dollars 
that we need not then get into the traditional mindset of we need an influencer who is going to influence my consumer whereas today the consumer is actually largely influenced by a very smart app you know so we should rather decide on spending in the ux of the uh, the web interface and rather not spend money there so it's for us to decide and uh, we need to filter this out in our uh, mechanism because uh, the brand's success is finally what we are accountable to deliver in our roi campaigns and you know that's finally we cannot go back and uh, reflect back and figure out who oh, actually that influencer didn't work actually my app really functioned well so the number of downloads etc becomes a huge thing today and how you kick start the downloads and how you kick start a digital campaign may or may not always be driven by the influencer so there is a little changing uh, phase there in the cx and the ux uh, is where the influencer market is getting uh, slightly diluted or taking so away the largely large brands you know big brands you know mark is well nike the big guys maybe some big celebrity influencer can still be there because that placement is a different placement in the brand journey in the brand identification but smaller brands who are quick and digitally launched just 48 you know i think 24 months and the brand has become like um, it's like overshot the numbers he is playing a different game he is not playing the traditional strategy game so we need to gauge from there uh, what to propose as our uh, strategy okay. <laughs> yeah uh, mamta to your to your question on you know uh, for who does these influencer campaigns work for right i think by and large what we've seen is that you know there are probably four industry sets which are more um have more uh, propensity for influencer marketing campaigns and those are consumer electronics uh, you know travel you know food and beverage lifestyle and also increasingly now you know uh, financial services uh, i think those categories are seeing a surge in you know influencer brand and brand marketing of course uh should be will also uh agree that you know, what it is also a huge uh, 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 user of influencer marketing uh and, and then in terms of you know um who is really consuming that content from you know all of the influencers they follow obviously the you know the gen z and all of those types of uh, demographic audiences are uh, you know more likely to you know go by a influencers uh recommendations or inputs But I think, having said that, brands are also sort of spreading the wings to even you know uh, all sorts of uh, age groups and demographics, right? Uh, you know, you have influencers that are you know targeting you know fifty plus, sixty plus in age group. Uh, you know, they're doing some great content. Uh, so I think it really depends on you know what do you want from you know uh, your campaign. But we're seeing some very interesting examples uh, come up as well. Yeah. So uh, that just brings me to another point on the data and the numbers, which is. uh so if we really look at the pie at the sky sort of a situation so in in marketing mix are you seeing influencers increasingly eating into the share of other marketing functions or other marketing tools and if yes then uh what would be the immediate is it eating into pr is it eating into conventional advertising is it eating into outdoor so where do you think uh, you know the shift is really happening any of you please I think should this best place to answer that. <laughs> <laughs> so um so let me put it this way that uh, it is and uh, the last numbers that I read I think were almost about 40% of uh, marketing budgets for some brands are going into influencer marketing. Um and this is during covid uh, covid and post covid situation but uh, as for as a brand if I talk uh, we strongly believe that our owners are are real influencers and if you will see how we sort of do influencer marketing it's more of owner based marketing or storytelling formats through the smaller influencers uh that works very well for us because uh, if as an auto brand if my owner believes in my brand uh that's the key that i need for the people for the rest of the people to believe the best form of marketing has always been word of mouth and we still remain to you know we still stick by it and if an owner believes that you know the ford uh, any any uh, vehicle of ford any car of ford is uh, 
is good and is uploading pictures is uploading content we actually develop that content and almost about 9 to 10 stories uh, uh in 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 a uh, in uh, 15 days in about 15 days times are of our owner stories mm. so mm. if i if i'm getting owners who are actually sharing their own content they are my biggest spokesperson right so yeah. they act as the influencer for us so if if you talk to me about as fort uh, is it eating into our marketing budget i would say no because we've always sustained on the fact that our owners are our biggest influencers uh, and we use smaller influencers uh, we use the smaller influencers to do storytelling for us which connect more with the audiences with the right segments and we do a lot of it through drive throughs through uh, giving them the vehicles to drive around and build the stories and content around it so uh, to answer your question in short <laughs> for us uh, not as of now <laughs> i get it uh, it's a really uh, interesting point you raise because we have actually done a uh, report to understand influence across asia pacific and in that um, when we surveyed uh, you know uh, audiences we found there was a category of consumers who we described as uh, engaged enthusiasts right mm -hmm. uh, so these exactly are your customers um, right. and the typical uh, behavior we see of them is that you know these folks you know spend about 3 to 4 hours you know online every yeah. day uh, you know they are more likely to make recommendations you know following the queue of other influencers within their personal networks also uh, so these really are sort of your super influencers who have the ability to harness tremendous influence for your brand right so i think just as your uh, uh, your uh, customers go for your ford cars you know it's the same thing So we're definitely seeing, you know, pockets of influence emerge within those categories also. Yeah. So as I see, then uh, it's the specialist influencer, it's the micro influencer, and now it's the nano influencer too. So yeah, uh, micro influencer, yeah, yeah. So so in that sense, we it, it, it's very right to say that consumer can be your influencer too. For sure. Yeah. So uh, my last question would be on the rise of social commerce, and maybe Rashan, you would like to address this: that how it is leading the way. I mean, you correctly said it with your, uh, you know, analogy on uh, UX and uh, the the user uh, uh, interface and the consumer interface. So uh, witnessing this surge, um, uh, platforms like Misho, SimSim, Bulbul, how do you see digital marketing coming of age and the role of influencer changing there? uh i think you're on mute great sorry thanks amta so um on this social commerce which is really uh, taking on now is eating into the influence because when you actually are doing you know when you are in your uh, journey or shopping or logging in you will see uh, immediately you know they start giving you points for referrals and there are so many you know weekly incentives coming in referral incentives coming in it is motivating you to add 10 more friends and you get bonus and you get this so all this is only just going viral and you are creating your influencer cycle right over there in your own friend list and forwarding again the other guy does it so it's a chain which is building on and it is catching on which may eventually pick up it will add to being a little dent into the mainstream marketing budget that was done because through influencer through chain 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 they are capturing a larger market share so every time you buy a small little thing on misho you add five more friends and five more friends adds five more friends and they are getting referrals and they are getting margins on sales and they are getting weekly bonuses so why not housewives are doing it young uh, students are doing it so i think it is so easy now so we need to recognize this and realize and accordingly adapt to our uh, strategies you know yeah so that, but now with the crash of tiktok uh, that happened recently uh, my only question is that um, how many such platforms and for how long so is there is there any kind of a sustained model that you can look at or is influencer marketing really here to stay or if yes uh, uh, would it be always platform driven so any of you could uh, take that on on a closing note Well, I think. Well, I think in in the modern hyper connected era, I think influencer marketing is here to stay, and so are uh, social platforms. And as we discussed earlier on, our, you know, on our chat today, 
that uh, you know um, uh, platforms will come and go, uh, and you know social media networks obviously do a great job of really coalescing you know cultural uh, you know uh, insights you know what really sort of is is the pulse on consumers on you know at at the particular given point of time. So you know, TikTok was uh, you know uh, uh, emblematic of you know the short form video which has become so popular. So we'll see you know more and more platforms emerge over time. You know, like we talked about, uh, Clubhouse is emerging in the U.S., which is audio only uh, platform. And you know, very soon you'll have you know super influencers on. In fact, you already have influencers like Elon Musk, you know, on uh, Clubhouse. So this is going to be you know continuing for the foreseeable future. Uh, you know, as long as we're online and you know uh, hyper connected, there will always be influencers. There will always be platforms, and you know, marketers have to become increasingly more and more creative to be able to. Uh, you know, um, uh, uh, gain their uh, interest, right? Um, so, yeah, I mean, sort of long answer, but yeah, they're here Good. to stay. <laughs> yeah, anything on the parting note, uh, Rachna, Shruti? I think, um, I think influencers are here to stay. Um, we need to very carefully define our marketing strategies, whether we want to market uh, using an influencer as the core, or using him as part of your strategy. Uh, as part of your strategy, I feel is more beneficial because it's longer stay, it's sustainable, and it remains in the mind rather than using it one time and letting it go off. So as a brand, you have to be very cautious to decide how you want to deliver your message in the longer run, not short-sighted. So that's right. yeah, that's for me. And Rachna? How would like sure. how would you like to conclude? So influencer is here to stay. We need to only identify who is the influencer for me at this point in time and who is going to be the influencer for me in future. So maybe his roles, the role of influencing will always be a part of my is something will be a part of content, will be a part of our industry. And we are at an edge here because if we adapt to the digital strategy, then we have a super edge over other only digital guys you know because in pr in communications if our skill is content creation storytelling we are the masters on it then then what we need to acquire is the digital skill set and then we top it up <laughs> so that's Absolutely. that's the I would, and it would be uh, you know all of us need to go through the journey on learning and adding digitals uh, complete digital uh, ecosystem should be embedded into the pr industry and then we roll it <laughs> over there <laughs> Absolutely. Sure. Thank you. Thank you so much. I would just like to conclude by saying that with the shrinking size of the new uh, the newsrooms is a huge opportunity. And who knows tomorrow on your screen pops up uh, a journalist delivering news in a more entertaining way. And it could be your personal journalist reporting to you. So uh, to the, the, the only constant as it is in every phase is uh, change. So I think we as marketers are always geared to that. and. Uh, we got to keep boarding our buses sooner than later. Thank you. With that, we, we come to the end of the session. Thanks. Thank you, everyone. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.